Aditya Digital Network presents the longest running episodic talk show in India in association with the dusra.net India's number one and only sports education and entertainment for the first time in over 2 and a half years we've had someone from the Indian cricket board administration who have made no bones about what they think about dhoni's future and haven't played into the media's hands by saying cliche like we don't know where dhoni stands we are yet to talk on dhoni but saurav ganguly is the first administrator who has said something which has shook the entire media industry especially the sports side of the media by storm dhoni's future with the team as a player and his retirement have often come under the microscope while the captain and the coach have often supported him their opinions have often been made to look like bias but now a new statement coming from the administration side from a former player who is now the president slash chairperson of the cricket board it has made everybody stand up and see it as a non partisan statement ganguly said and i quote there's absolute clarity on dhoni you will find out in time this statement means one thing nobody can question dhoni's place in the team even if he hasn't participated in the matches post the world cup and in the last two and a half years ever since dhoni's position in the team has been questioned because of his slow batting and other factors such as age and his contribution to the team this is the first time that an administrator has made things very clear in complete contrast to the selection committee who have often fumbled on the words as far as dhoni's place in the team is concerned we can interpret this in two ways one is that we do not take the captain and the coaches comments seriously or we presume that anything coming from the captain and the coach is often biased considering dhoni's influence on the team despite his 6 month absence another point is the influence the media has on the selection matters and how gullible the selection committee is that they are influenced by what the media says with respect to selecting or dropping a player this kind of influence and the gullibility has nearly railroaded two potential careers in KL Rahul and Rishab Pant while Rahul's replacement in Rohit Sharma is still like for like and talent for talent but Pant's replacement in Saha because the sports media and a few pseudo experts and commentators kept on reiterating that Saha is the best keeper in terms of flexibility and catching and such opinions affected the selection committee and the captain and the coach and the team management up to such an extent that they chose saha an ordinary player and a keeper over pant the best keeper to come out of the country since dhoni made his debut 15 years ago one more thing that ganguly made it clear was something i had talked about in the episodes post the world cup he said and i quote there's transparency between the board ms and the selectors when you deal with such champions ms dhoni is an unbelievable athlete for india certain things have to be kept within the closed doors it's very transparent and everybody knows where they stand here the closed door being the operative word which means that whatever discussion happens between dhoni the board the selectors and the team management they don't have to be revealed for the past 
three to four years, the Indian Cricket Board was run by a committee of administrators whose knowledge of cricket is equal to a fifth grader's knowledge of the laws of physics. But in comes an individual Ganguly who's been on the other side, who's been there when you're not selected, when your place in the side is question which means that Ganguly has worn the other shoe which the committee of administrators never could possess. These kinds of statements though are not necessary but they are needed when you have to ward off the media hounds of you and Ganguly did exactly that. One more thing that these statements show is that you don't have to go into specifics all the time especially an individual who is the administrator and not directly involved with a certain player. But at times when there is a need to clarify, one doesn't need to go into the specifics about a certain player's position in the team. This individual may have given specific statements about Dhoni, but they are still cryptic. Means there are discussions which remain behind closed doors. Such a statement from Ganguly would have only come after he would have spoken to Dhoni who would have told him that they needed something to tell the media so that they can be kept off his back while leaving the specifics of a player to the captain and the coach. The West Indies series begins this Friday. The audition continues for a few fringe players to seal their position in the team and right now who are the fringe players? Pant, despite all his talent, finds himself in a position where he could be dropped thanks to the negative publicity he's been receiving for the past couple of months. Dhawan's injury means that Rahul's position in the team is now locked and loaded. It will be a very difficult call for the selectors and the team management to lock in on the 17 individuals who will go to Australia for the 20 over World Cup. It's going to be a difficult call between the three talented all-rounders between Shivam Dubey, Hardik Pandya and Vijay Shankar because only one out of these three individuals can make it to the final 17. Though it would be smart for the selectors to go with two fast bowling all-rounders looking at Hardik Pandya's often injured body. Once upon a time we had a talented all-rounder in Irfan Pathan but injuries plagued him and he was out of the team and we could never find a potential and a suitable replacement and India suffered at many matches because of an all-rounder's absence. But now they have three who are equally talented and deserve a position in the team. Even if we select Pandya by default, we have to keep Dubey and Vijay Shankar on standby. This takes care of the fast bowling all-rounders and for now I have not included Bhubaneshwar Kumar and Deepak Chahar in this fast bowling all-rounder category. Now let's take a look at the spinning all-rounders that we have. At this point, Jadeja and Washington Sundar are also locked and loaded. Means that someone like Kunal Pandya who has been excluded from the team against the West Indies will have to work hard to make sure that he can slot himself for the final 17 for the 20 over World Cup. So in terms of all-rounders, we have six of them, three fast-balling all-rounders and three spinning all-rounders. Moving on to the wicket-keepers, at this point we have two and a half wicket-keepers who are good enough. That is Pant, Samson and Rahul. Rahul might make it to the team because he is an opener and Dhawan's career looks to be over because of his injury which he might not recover from for at least four to five months and if Rahul continues to make runs then we can kiss Dhawan's career goodbye. The top four batters will most likely be Rahul, Rohit, Ayer and 
Kohli. And as far as Friday's match is concerned, for me, the best team against West Indies would be Rohit and Rahul as the openers, Kohli at number 3, Ayer at number 4, Pant at number 5, then the all-rounders, Dubey, Jadeja, Washington. The two fast bowlers in Cheher and Bhunmeshwar and one of the spinners between Chehel and Kuldeep. Since Chehel was part of the last six matches, they might give Kuldeep a go. And we all know the cliche that West Indies won't be pushovers. They will fight hard as they are two-time World Cup champions. They also have players who have been performing well in the various 20-over domestic tournaments around the world. West Indies also have good all-rounders that includes the captain Kyron Pollard, Fabian Allen, Hayden Walsh Jr., Jason Holder, Kimo Paul, Sherfane Rutherford after South Africa and Bangladesh who were taken care of easily despite the 1-1 result against South Africa and the 2-1 result against Bangladesh and many Pseudo experts claiming that Bangladesh played well. West Indies could be the toughest assignment, followed by New Zealand next year. At least 50% of the West Indies players have played in the respective Indian T20 domestic tournaments, especially considering the likes of Karen Pollard, who has been closely associated with the Mumbai Super Kings captain Rohit Sharma. It's very similar to what happens in tournaments like Champions League and EPL after which Euro 2020 follows and you have the best of compatriots becoming rivals in a matter of months. In this context, between the two teams, there is no superior team and no inferior team. They are matched at every level, from the openers, to the fast bowlers, to the spinners, to the all-rounders. As well as in having three astute captains in Ayer, Rohit and Kohli. For both teams, it is about auditioning for the next 10 months instead of the result. Result cannot be the first point in this tournament. It will be all about auditioning for the 20 over World Cup. Neither of the teams will win hands down, but neither of them will ever give up. So do not expect a 3-0 result as well. Though the Indians would want to exploit what the Afghanistan team did as West Indies struggled against the Afghanistan spinners while chasing scores of 140 and 150. And looking at the weakness of the West Indies team, India might go with an extra spinner thereby sacrificing a batter or a potential all-rounder. It won't be a surprise if Kuldeep and Chehel both make it to the team. Even it means sacrificing at the altar a potential all-rounder and in this case Shivam Dube might be sacrificed in place of Kuldeep and Chehel both making it to the team. But if this happens they could play into the West Indies team if West Indies picks up quick wickets. So it has to be a smart balance between exploiting the weakness of the other team and at the same time not falling into a trap thereby creating a weakness of your own. So it will be interesting as to how they go about facing the two-time world champion. It is not every day that one gets to watch a polo match. That too specifically the President's Polo Cup. We often talk about skill and dexterity needed in sports. Well, polo triumphs every game in terms of skill, dexterity and balance. It is a horseback mounted team sport, a game that for centuries has always been of the royals and the elites. We may call cricket a game of the royals and the elite, but polo, the kind of skill that it requires, the kind of individuals who spend time playing this, 
may triumph cricket in this regard who are the individuals who usually play polo well since time in memorial polo is played by cavalry that is the army navy depending on the need a sport that is itself over 250 years old in india with a polo club over 150 years old in calcutta polo is the oldest of the equestrian sport it consists of two team of four players each with one reserve player with each team the players use long flexible wooden handles to drive a wooden ball between a grass field and into the goal posts this was my first ever live polo game in football we have heard the terms defender attacker and forwards in polo we also have a similar lineup each player is assigned with responsibilities but the positions are numbered not named the two teams that i saw go against each other were the president's bodyguard and the lancers and all the eight players ranging from shimran sergel drupal godara angat kalan gorav segal abhimanyu pathak vishal chohan Sadan Sharma and Colonel NS Sandhu are all former national and international players. One of the most important aspects of polo is the relationship between the rider and their respective horse. It is a relationship that has to be nurtured, cultivated and made sure that the horse responds to the instruction of their rider and they are in comfort so as to the rider may not be thrown off suddenly if the horse feels frightened and these are possibilities with the horse being a sentient being balancing the saddle in one hand along with the stick in the other bending down making sure that the ball reaches the goal post as well as the horse traveling at a speed of 40 foot per second it is a game of danger but here the polo match wasn't just about the match itself but the entire experience of the audience as well as the atmosphere of the place where the match happened the action happens quickly between two goal posts so you have to keep your eyes laid on a polo match is divided into time periods called chakras each chakar is of 7 minutes long players must change their horses after each chakar due to the extreme demands placed on the pony a horse covers 2 and a half to 3 miles per chakar ponies play a maximum of 2 chakars per match the match that i witnessed yesterday afternoon might have been called a exhibition match in name but in game it was worth watching an international match the players left no stone unturned to show their skill dexterity as well as the balance and the atmosphere around the players the crowd was also terrific so if you do get a chance to be invited for a polo match or you have the opportunity to go and watch one go there because it might just change your world view it deserves all the respect with it being one of the oldest and the most exciting sport in the world thank you for listening to episode number 137 on the 2nd of december 2019 i will be back very soon with the next episode please send your valuable suggestions through your comments and audio recording to the email id aditya the writer at gmail.com you can also like and subscribe to my youtube channel and facebook page and stay tuned for the next episode